Hi everyone, I'm immigration lawyer John Kasravi. Thank you for joining me today, Friday, June 5th, 5 p.m. Pacific, for our live question and answer session Q&A about U.S. immigration. And as everyone starts trickling in and the questions start coming, let me just let you know, uh, I'm an immigration attorney. I practice out of Los Angeles, California, but I help people from across the country and in every state, so my location doesn't matter. The information provided here is educational only, general understandings of what's going on in the immigration sphere, but not intended for individual legal advice, educational only. Results could vary drastically because of how the process works, and this is considered an attorney advertisement. But uh, as you're coming in, please let me know where you're joining us from, what city, what state, and uh, what kind of immigration issue you're facing, we'll talk about it. And I'm going to talk about some other stuff before uh, you know we really jump into it, but I want to let you all know that you can catch the recording of this on the YouTube page for JQK Law Firm. Just check out JQK Law Firm YouTube page and you can subscribe there to get more information. The live today is uh, Friday, so Fridays are on Facebook, um, JQK Law Firm Facebook page, and as always, every day on TikTok, uh, Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific. The username on TikTok, the profile name, is Immigration Lawyer John. That's John, J-O-H-N. Nasrullah, hi, thank you for joining. Uh, and so we get these questions here, we answer them, we try to help people out, and every day there's a lively discussion. Things are going good. National Law, thank you so much. My kids didn't sleep uh, well last night, so I was kind of off today, but I'm starting to wake up, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, finally, in the evening, I'm starting to wake up. Uh, are those coffee signals we have right there? I see what you're talking about, definitely. I don't drink coffee, but a lot of tea is how I make up uh, for the lack of sleep for those who have kids that know how it goes. Uh, but uh, overall, things are going okay. I mean, they're going good, but you know, I feel bad. Um, you know, one of the questions we're going to get inevitably today is when is USCIS opening up? And although they said June 4th is the day that they're going to be opening up, it's not really. Each office is going to be different, and each office is handling it differently. Oh, now so you're from India. I'm, I'm in India. I'm surprised. I thought you're in the US. I think you've been on the show before. Uh, but so USCIS is. Um, and if for those listening to audio and video of this, I'm answering questions to people on other social media. That's why I just jump in and, and talk to people like this. You might not be able to see it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we don't know what's going to happen right now with USCIS opening. Even when they do open, the priority of a lot of the offices is for people who have citizenship cases pending, uh, not for people who uh, you know do adjustment of status. So you know who knows uh, what's going to happen. As always, what I say is just be patient, and hopefully uh, it will come through and, and you'll get what you need. Um, but it's it's a crazy time. We're getting RFEs, requests for evidence. So this is when people submit a case uh, and they're waiting for a decision. If the government feels like there's insufficient evidence, they send what's called a request for evidence. We're seeing a massive uptick in these. And when they're asking for more evidence, they're usually asking for, at least for my colleagues, lawyers and I, uh, file these. They're asking for things we've already submitted. So it's very frustrating. It's nerve-wracking. Clients get confused and anger too. They say, they, they're mad at me potentially. They say, why don't you send this? But we did. Or they say, why is USCIS like this? I just said, this is the nature of a huge system that handles hundreds of thousands of these cases at, at any one time. Uh, and uh, in an administration that's not too fond of helping people that are in your circumstances. So despite the fact you're paying all this money, all these government filing fees, uh, it doesn't mean much how they're going to treat you. Um, they used to be part of the, the USCIS uh, you know, mission statement was providing service because they are a fee-based agency. You pay for that service when you are filing an application. Uh, Ken, I'm doing good. Thank you. However, when a new administration came, they took out the language about service and said it's a fraud detection unit, which is not part of what it was originally intended for. Um, so that's, that's what happens. Proud Pig asks, I put I-130 when I started my fill. I, your question doesn't make sense. Please reword it so I could better understand what you're asking for. The 4 I-130 is a petition for alien relative. This is when someone wants to apply for relatives of theirs uh, and they submit a case uh, with that paperwork. So um, I don't understand what you're starting to say, but uh, if you want to reword your question and give it a shot and we can take it from there. Uh, what else is going on? You know, premium processing is going to start trickling in. These are usually for point based cases. That's going to be good. BJ asks, how long to get an interview after I-693 a uh, month ago? So I-693 uh, is a notice that they say you got to bring your medical to the interview. There is no set time whenever the interview happens for you will happen. There's no fixed time after getting one letter for the next thing to happen. Ken asks, when will the 2020 H-1B premium processing resume? Uh, if you go to USCIS.gov, they've broken it down. It's going to resume, I mean, uh, start resuming right now. Uh, I think the first one is on Monday. 
but it depends on what kind of case you have. So if you have an H-1B case, go to USCIS.gov, go to the form I-907 pre and processing page, and they have a, a staggered system of every week uh, letting certain types of H-1B cases move forward as well as other kinds. For example, this Monday, I'm gonna be filing a pre and processing case for an L-1 intercompany transfer. It's not an H-1B, it's a different kind of visa, um, but on Monday the 8th is when they start letting that happen. Uh, so, you know, check that out uh, and see what's appropriate for your case. So, uh, Mohan asks, I want 30, what are supporting to, what are supporting documents we need to send? Well, it depends on what kind of I-130 you're submitting. Uh, basically, at the very least, it's showing that the relationship is real if your brothers and sisters, uh, if your stepchildren, if your stepbrothers and sisters, if your parents, it depends on what the relationship is. All this information is on the instructions for Form I-130. So uh, I-130, uh, they could be eight or nine different family relationships. Each one have their own documentation uh, that need uh, support. And so just look at the instructions or if it's, if it's not working out, just you know, hire an attorney or schedule a consultation. My email is info at jqklaw.com and we could review what you need uh, for your case, but uh, that your question is too broad in general for me to answer here, especially because the instructions are all online. You could find that easily. Uh, Pratik asks, I'm waiting for approval from USCIS for I-130. I hope it I hope it works out well. They're taking a little bit longer sometimes, sometimes they're faster. It's really inconsistent time. Arsalan asks, hi, my wife at back home, which way can she come quickly to USC? I have a green card, but five year here. Okay, so I think you're saying that your wife's outside the US, you want her to come here quickly, uh, what's the best way to do it? There is no quick in immigration. There's only what you can do and how long the government takes. So if you're a green card holder and you're married, you have to file a marriage green card case, start an I-130 and then start the process being here. Um, you know, consult an immigration attorney, email my office and we schedule a consultation. There are fees for consultations, uh, but we can discuss them more. But essentially, you gotta do a marriage green card case. Uh, Hamksa uh, asks, are embassies open? Uh, they are starting to open up. It depends on the location. Each country has different uh, ways they're dealing with COVID-19 and different rates of, um, of infection. So there's, it's just different everywhere. Just like in, in America, some states are opening up, some aren't, some cities are closed, some aren't. Uh, you need to, uh, if you have a specific embassy that you're dealing with, you need to go to their website, see what they say there. And if it's not clear, maybe email them and see uh, what their priority, their processing is, but and what they're doing with depending on the type of case. Like if it's an immigrant visa or a non-immigrant visa, there's a lot going on there. So just contact the embassy or maybe hire an attorney to de help you with your case. They could advise you in private. Uh, but your question is too broad. There's no answer. It's just too broad. There's a lot going on there. Let's see who else. Uh, can ask, how about H1B cap case? Um, how about it? I mean, just look at the pre and processing there and you could get into it. Uh, that's uh, that thing I said on USCIS.gov. DJ asks, how long it takes for I-130 for spouse of US citizens? There is no how long. Go to USCIS.gov and you'll get some information there. It's not complete, so it's not gonna be a reliable information source for timelines, um, but it's just, there's no how long. Um, uh, practically asking my setist, I'm not sure what your set is, I think of your sister. Um, you know, it, this is case specific advice because I need to know about your relationship, what's going on. So uh, definitely uh, review the instructions for my 130 or consult an attorney in private. Bushka asks, if I try to fix my I-94 errors, will CB put me in trouble as I'm trying to file for I-140? Okay, so uh, when someone enters the United States as a non-immigrant for temporary purposes, at entry, the Customs and Border Protection, CBP, the port authorities, the, those officers at Customs, uh, issue an online paper called Form I-94, Record of Entry and Arrival and Departure. So you could go, that, that shows that you entered the US lawfully. If there's errors on there, you should fix them. And it's something I wish everyone would check. A lot of people don't know about it. But when you do enter the US as a non-immigrant, a visitor or a work visitor or whatever, you need to check online and make sure errors aren't on there. So if there are errors, yeah, you should correct it. Will it get you into trouble? I don't know. I don't know your specific case situation to say if it will get you in trouble or not. So this is the kind of situation you need to consult with an attorney in private with to see what the issue is and then look into how to fix it. Uh, but whether something will get you in trouble or not, I don't know. Uh, we gotta look into it. If you are having an I-140 file for you, you probably have a lawyer anyways. That lawyer could answer this kind of question for you. Muna says, did they open up for applying green card through work? They never closed it. So um, this is a misunderstanding. A lot of people had USCIS never closed the opportunity to apply for a green card through work uh, for them to have a, you know, open it now. Uh, Hara asks, MEC working on it? Again, MEC has been working. It may have slowed down a bit because of the coronavirus, but it has been working in processing cases and you could do that. Again, these are all the reasons why people should have attorneys to not worry about these kind of stuff. And the attorney would know and research this. Muna asks, like, is there a, a businessman who will sponsor for me? 
these kind of kind of ridiculous question. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry to be mean, but it's like I don't know. Like it's like saying, "Can you find me a wife?" I'm not. I'm not a matchmaker. Uh, Mohan asks, "I four eight five supporting doctor married you." Uh, you know, all the documents are listed in the instructions. What you need to submit. I'm not going to get into that because it depends on your case and what your relationship situation is. Uh, if you want legal advice that's that specific, consult with an immigration attorney. There's people who do free consultations. Even there's a lot of information online. There's YouTube videos, blogs. Uh, but it's not here to tell you what you need to do on your case specifically. This is general kind of advice, so I can't answer those kind of questions. Usman says, hey, my mother is a green card holder. Can she sponsor my three brothers under 21, please? Well, it, this is an issue. Like, How did your mother get her green card? Because uh, the children maybe should have been on there in the first place. So right there, there's a red flag like looking into why your, the, the, your brother and sisters who are un minors under 21 didn't get a green card as well. So that's one of the reasons we got to look into uh, what's going on with the case. But uh, a green card holder can file for children under 21 or even children above 21 who are unmarried. There's different timelines for those, but it is possible as long as your brother or sister stay unmarried that your mother file for them, but there's more to it that has to be reviewed to see what category they're under, what issues exist. Like I said, why didn't your brother and sisters um, get green cards as well? I'm assuming actually you probably as a citizen file for your parents, for your mom. That's probably why she got the green card. Now she's going to get it for the children. Just consult with an attorney to do it right. Uh, there's a public charge issues that are happening now when you have children, when a lot of children and stuff that we need to go into and finances. So definitely something to consult with an immigration attorney with. Kind of asked about H-1B cases. Uh, you know, I've answered that question a couple times, so I'll be uh, I'll skip through that. Uh, Nova asks, how difficult is it to bring a relative with a disability? It depends on a lot of factors, what the disability is and how much, you know, what their situation is. So uh, that's too general and broad of a question. We need to know a lot of specifics about your finances, their finances, their disability, their issues. There's a lot of things we need to know information about to be able to answer that. It's too broad a question to answer how difficult it is without knowing a lot more information about you. So it's best to use consult with an immigration attorney. Uh, Pratik asks about a timeline. Again, go to USCIS.gov. You'll get some information there. It's not reliable. It doesn't get the whole thing, but that's the best I could advise here. Consult with the immigration attorney. Uh, Kata, please stop asking the same question, man. <laughs> Dolly asks, what are your thoughts on people that marry just for visa? Can they get deported? I mean, what are my thoughts? Uh, my thoughts don't matter here. If someone lies and does a fake marriage, is fraud, and that's a crime, and they, they get deported if they're found out, that's about it. Um, I'm not sure what difference it makes to ask that question or know my opinion about it. I uh, don't I accept cases out of fraud. Uh, Cute Khan asks, three years ago I married, uh, who can apply for husband? Three years ago I married, who can, how can you probably say, can I apply for husband? Uh, you know, consult with immigration attorney to go through it. Uh, we got to see what's going on in your case. There's a lot of things we have to look for. Mohan, thanks for sharing the, uh, the, the live feed. Uh, Muna, uh, I don't know what your question is to answer you. Um, and don't be demanding. <laughs> no, we ask. Uh, and doesn't have any other relative to take care of her. I don't know. Again, I, I need to have an individual consultation. Um, it, it doesn't look good for the case, but I don't know. Um, you guys got to keep in mind, like, it's like going to the doctor. If you call a doctor and say, you know, my head hurts, uh, you know, am I okay? What's the doctor going to say? You know, you need to come in. We got to check it out. And it's the same situation here when these really broad questions are happening. I know you might not think it's broad, but as a practitioner, I deal with this every day, knowing the myriad of the, so many issues that pop up for immigration purposes, I, I, these are questions I know I need to know. Uh, sit down and talk with you about. And some of this is private, it's secret. We don't want you know everyone hearing about your kind of situation. So uh, it's your benefit to consult with an immigration attorney in private. Baloch Khan asks, I am qualified to file for citizenship, so I apply now or wait? Uh, why, I, people ask this question, I don't understand why you would ask that. So you should first consult the lawyer, a couple of lawyers, to see if you are actually qualified or you don't have issues. I've seen people file for citizenship cases, get it denied, they even go into deportation because they have problems with their case. So you should consult the immigration attorney and then in private, once they review your case, they can tell you. I don't know anything about you other than this username you have. How could I advise you about something so personal as to whether to go to the government and tell them I want to file for citizenship, where they go deeply into your immigration history, into your personal history and your background, your marriages, your children, your addresses, your work, your military history, and it goes on and on and on. Uh, I, how could I answer that in a, in a, in a thing like that? So you got to think about that and go uh, consult an immigration attorney or immigration attorneys to get a good idea. Usman says, hey, my mother is a green card holder. We already asked that question, asked and answered. Uh, Chris asks, can you represent anyone or just immigration? I don't know what you're asking. Your question doesn't fully make sense, but I could handle any kind of case if someone wants an immigration case. If you're in California, I can handle as a California attorney, which I am. I can handle other cases, but I focus and specialize only on immigration law. So if you have an immigration issue and within immigration, I don't handle every type of case. I only handle some types of cases. So you got to email me, 
break down what kind of issue or case that you have. I'll let you know if it's the kind of case I handle, and then we schedule an initial consultation for me to review what's going on with your case, so I can figure out how much work is needed, how much time is needed, and we can take it from there. There is a consultation fee for that time too, but just email me at info at jqklaw.com, and we could get into it there. Uh, Wusha, you're welcome. Invisibilize, uh, give your insights on Heroes Bill. Will it be helpful for immigrants? I don't like giving it uh, comments on bills that are not become law. Uh, because every year there's about 50 to 60 immigration bills that come to place and then uh, none of them go anywhere and the very rare ones that do go through they change them so much it's totally different than we filed at the beginning so a lot of people do videos on this it's clickbait to get attention a lot of that i've seen the top youtubers do a lot of clickbait stuff that doesn't make a difference in anyone's lives because it doesn't even go through uh, so my opinion on heroes bill and stuff until something is law and i read that the laws it doesn't matter if it goes through it could have potentially help doctors and nurses and medical field come uh, but you know why speculate about something? That's not. I'm not here. I'm here to go with the facts. <laughs> I'm not here to speculate, which means just make things up and guess. I'm here to try to go as, as factual as possible. So I'm gonna uh, let other people uh, give opinions on guessing stuff. Uh, cute con asks, how can I apply for my husband? Well, you, you know, you gotta file a form I-130. If they're abroad, it's constant processing. If they're here, it's adjustment of status. But we gotta look at your background, your finances, your marriage history, all this kind of stuff. But that's a general overview. Hams asks, when will COVID-19 end? I'm glad you asked that. That's the kind of question people ask when they ask about how long their case has. That's a funny question. It's exactly, when will COVID-19 end? How can I guess that? I appreciate um, that, that question or that joke. Uh, Gotra asks, I am a green card holder. Can I apply for my mother? No, you have to be a U.S. citizen to be able to apply for your parents' green cards. A green card holder cannot apply for their mother or father. Only a citizen can do that. So try to you know, get your citizenship together. The second they give you the naturalization certificate, the paper that says, I'm a U.S. citizen uh, naturalization certificate, and that day you could file a Form I-130 for your parents if they're already here lawfully in some way or have some exceptions. Um, they could even adjust status. Uh, but you gotta look into a lot of other factors that are related to the case. But yeah, you have to uh, be a U.S. citizen to be able to file for your parents. Rich asks, uh, I have an emergency to Mexico. Where can I get my passport? Okay, so you have to go to uh, um, Mexico. You have to contact the State Department. Uh, if you go to the Passport Agency website, there'll be a phone number for your local agency. Call them, tell them it's an emergency. Ask them what they need to expedite your passport. Have proof of the reason you can need a passport and hopefully they'll issue it. It's up to them, uh, but uh, you need to contact the Passport Agency for help on that. All that information is online. Nova, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Munaz, is USCIS open again? I discussed this already. Nicole says, what type of visa would you need to apply for in order to bring an underage relative to the US, 15 year old? Um, you know, if that 15 year old relative wants to come and visit the United States, they can apply for a tourist visa on their own. Um, they will get approved or not get approved. Uh, if they're European, they have a pa European passport. Maybe some countries that are part of the uh, ESTA program, visa waiver program, Japan, Europe, Australia, that kind of stuff. Um, they could come and visit the United States on a 90 day trip. If they want to go to school here, they have to find a private school, pay for it and get a student visa to come here. Um, but those are the, some of the options. There may be other ones, uh, depending on their factual circumstances that I don't know that could happen. But yeah, tourist visa, student visa, visa waiver, those are generally used for younger people to just come and visit here. If they're planning on coming to live here, it's going to be very hard uh, for that to happen. Um, there's not many options for a kid unless their parents are getting a green card, unless the kid's really rich or has a huge talent of some sort that we don't know about. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, you know, consult the immigration attorney. Moon asks, what about the lottery? So there's a thing called the green card lottery, the diversity visa lottery. Every year uh, for countries that don't have high numbers of green cards being issued to them, they could sign up, uh, nationals or citizens of those countries could sign up um, and uh, apply for this lottery to maybe get a green card. There's 50,000 of these uh, slots open, usually a little more than half that actually get the green card. Uh, but you apply for it and then if you have your interview and you're approved before the end of September of the following year, then you can get the green card. The issue right now is that people have been chosen at the lottery, need to go to the U.S. Embassy to do their visa interview. If they're already in the United States, they could file for adjustment of status, they need to do an interview. Both of these are problematic because they're not doing interviews with USCIS essentially and they're also embassies are shut down. So these people need to do their interviews and have the case approved before the end of September or else they're going to lose their spot in the lottery and have to do it again next year, have to apply it again this year. I mean, essentially they lose out. So that's a big issue. This whole coronavirus shutdown of USCIS and of the US embassies has really hurt and freaked out a lot of people who had won the green card lottery, had this great opportunity and it was taken from under them because of the coronavirus. 
Hopefully, if the embassies open up again, they'll give priority to these people. Or if USCIS is doing interviews, they give priority to the diversity visa lottery applicants. Because again, if their green card is not approved and issued before the end of September, they lost that opportunity and that's gone. So it's a really messed up situation. Uh, Karan, I already talked about when NBC is opening up. It's never been closed. Uh, Zimbo, thank you for following. Invisible ask, uh, Heroes Act Bill, your insight, did you, did you did not answer? Invisible, I, I answered for like three, four minutes. Please listen. Um, Prot asks, uh, this is uh, for I-130, send if we accept your, this is for I-130, you send me if you accept. Prot, I, I, your question doesn't make sense. Just email me and we can schedule a consultation. Again, there's a fee for the consultation, but email me, we can talk about it there. You asked the question several times. Uh, it's just not the forum for it. Uh, Fawad asks, can you look at a case about reentry after deportation? It's for my brother. Thank you. I do not handle cases that have deportation history or removal history, so I wouldn't be a good resource. Uh, but definitely consult other attorneys that, that do that, and they can help you on see what to do about that. Um, let's see. Any idea when NBC opens? Okay, so NBC never closed. Uh, Chris Madden, thank you for following. If you're on TikTok, go ahead and, and follow this page so you get updates like this. I'm here uh, every Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific. As long as you have a lively group of questions coming, I'm going to keep doing this and it's been fun. Uh, Zin asks, how long does it take to be a citizen after applying because we applied in 28th of May? Uh, there is no fixed time of how long it takes to be a citizen. Try visiting USCIS.gov for the timelines that are estimated for your local office. But these timelines are not reliable, they're general estimates. You just have to be patient and wait for that to happen. Um, Nita asks, how long, uh, about how long are I-751 interviews? There is no fixed, anything related to time with immigration, there is no fixed time. So you're, you're asking, when you go to a removal of conditions interview, this is when someone has a green card through marriage, the marriage is new, you have to file a second application for two years. If they do an interview, so never, my case, I just got an I-751 today approved after eight months, no interview. None of my cases have ever had an interview because we well document interviews not required. If they have an interview, that's because they don't trust you in some way. There's some, some red flag you have. And when you go there, how long the interview takes just depends on how long that officer wants to take to question you. So it could be short, it could be long, they could separate you, they could grill you. It really depends on the facts of your case. So it's not a question you can answer. It's a case-by-case -case specific kind of situation. Uh, Muna, I already answered your question about the lottery. Fahad, I'm from California. My brother has now been deported over 10 years. I would like your help. Uh, again, I don't, I don't handle a case of deportation history. If you like, email me. I can try to connect you with a colleague. Please know a lot of my colleagues have consultation fees. Um, but if they're down with that, just email me. I don't know what their fees are, but uh, and I can try to connect you with somebody to, to review your case to see what could happen. Prot asks, if we accept your case, you will receive a receipt. If we accept your case, you will receive a receipt. Uh, USI send me. I, Prod, your stuff doesn't make sense. Your questions don't make sense, man. Come on, uh, just uh, just schedule a consultation. Uh, Nicole asks, I'm a citizen. Can I apply for my mother-in-law even though she's not my birth mother? No. You, you can't, I mean, your mother-in-law cannot be a file for her. Maybe if you have, you've you been adopted, maybe. If you have a stepmother, maybe, depending on the facts of when she became your stepmother. But a mother-in-law, I mean, the, the mother of your husband, has no direct relationship to you for immigration purposes. There's nothing you could do as a sponsor or for a petition for your mother-in-law. That's not possible. Uh, Muna, okay, we get a lot of people asking the same question. Um, uh, now, uh, Zin asks, how long does it take after citizenship to get the passport? There is no fixed time. It just varies depending on how busy the office is and what kind of emergency you have and all these kind of factors in your background. So there is no fixed time. Just whenever things about time come, don't trust it. And if anyone really tells you a specific time, don't trust them either. Every lawyer has to really say, you know, these are general timelines, but none of it makes sense. It could be faster, it could be longer. Don't worry about time. That's really the way to look at it. Um, Irene says, my husband and I have been married for over a year and we are planning to apply, but he hasn't worked. Uh, Ariane, I, I, need a little, I need to know more information about your case. It's not that easy to apply. I need to know more information about the foreign national and their immigration history. So schedule a consultation, info at jqklaw.com and we can take it from there. Um, the lack of work may or may not, it depends, it depends. Um, Cancer Mass, I had my N400 interview on February 27th and the decision is still not made, still not heard anything. You know, you just got to be patient. You can file a lawsuit if you like, um, but uh, you can try contacting USCIS, filing a lawsuit, um, but or else just wait. You know, sometimes these things just take longer. I don't know the details of your case. You might have some major issues I don't know about. Okay, so what else? So we got a couple more minutes left. Bajit asked my asylum denial. I'm sorry. And I applied, applied BOA. How my chance to win? 
I mean, it's like calling me and saying, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm deadly sick. Uh, what are my chances to live? I mean, I don't, I don't know anything about your case, <laughs> so it's not the question that you can ask here. It's not a, not a good question. Uh, Zin asks, uh, my husband' case is in process, but it's about to be two years. They haven't proved how long it might. So, you know, your case shouldn't. I don't know, Zin. I, I don't know what's going on with your case. Uh, you need to schedule a consultation, and we could go over it. Uh, Sanak asks, hi, sir. You know when the embassy will open and when you wait for an interview, how long it'll take. So Sahak, if you know when the coronavirus ends and we're not afraid of going in the streets and shaking hands, then you'll know when the embassy open. I don't, I don't have, I'm not God, I don't know those kind of answers. Sorry, this, this question is like the 50th time I've got asked this this week. Um, obviously, I, I don't know when these things are going to happen. I'm sorry to be harsh, but uh, the reality is, uh, you know, it's the coronavirus. Who knows what's going on? People are afraid to leave their house or wearing masks. I don't know what's going on. The same with the embassy. These people are working there. They're afraid for their health. And so uh, each country is different. You know, Iran has one of the highest numbers of coronavirus. China has high numbers. You know, when you go to New Zealand, you don't hear about high numbers over there. So maybe they'll open up New Zealand first, but they won't open up China for a while. I, I don't know what country you're from. I don't know what the decisions locally in China are. I don't know what the State Department, these are things that no one knows that could help you on that. And so you just have to be patient with regards to all these questions about timelines. As you, as you all know, we're all living this. It's a global pandemic. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Who knows who's going to be alive and who's going to be dead tomorrow. So in this case, you just got to be patient. There may be an officer working in your case, gets the coronavirus, dies tomorrow. Well, you know, your case is in his, locked in his office. Somebody has to go and open up the office, look at his file, restart everything. These things happen. So it's like, it's not, it's just not realistic. Uh, and uh, just, uh, it just, it's just not realistic. Uh, so I had a uh, room asked, I had an immigration court for a silent case, but now, uh, your question is not fulfilled. We're nearing the end. Please ask your sentences completely in a complete sentence and don't ask about timelines. Please, uh, it just, I, I, you know, a lot of people have other questions too uh, and it really throws things off. I know it's frustrating, but, uh, but it's just, it is what it is. It's life, you know, sometimes things take a while. Now, if it's taking too long uh, or you probably should have a lawyer anyways to go through it, um, you wouldn't have these kind of worries. You could have an estimate of how things are going and keep an eye on it. Uh, I, sorry, so I didn't mean to. It wasn't by. It's not. It wasn't your intention. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just that there was like so many people keep asking this, and I and I'm just repeating it. Uh, but I'm sure you just tuned in right now. You didn't know. I, I apologize if it was too harsh. Um, the Viraj asked. I applied for my wife in India. Got the email for a document approved for NBC on April 10th. Okay, so you got to start uploading your documents to the National Visa Center and be patient for the embassy to open up. Yeah, your wife's in India. As you know, India is a kind of crazy situation. A billion person country is completely shut down. So as you can tell, things aren't moving along uh, for the embassy interview, which I'm sure is going to be the next question. So you got to be patient for that. Uh, again, I'm sorry if I got too frustrated about this question about how long things take. It's just it's the constant question I have to answer and <laughs> it just it repeats itself. Uh, user 397 says, I came through SIV. It's a special immigrant visa. Can you tell me for how long I can apply for citizenship? I don't know. I need to see your, your facts to see what's going on. Probably five years, but I need to see exactly what the situation with your case is to be able to answer that. Um, it's, it's just too case specific. I don't want to give a wrong answer. All right, so we're nearing the end. Thank you everyone for joining Sock. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's a very frustrating thing. I understand uh, when, you know, everything shuts down and you're waiting for your green card case, all of a sudden USCI is not working. The embassies aren't working. And especially like I have cases, I, and I feel this every day because my clients are, are crying. I get people crying. A uh, woman here alone, um, she's like, you know, near her 40s. She's waiting for her husband to come here because they want to have a baby. She's like, I'm getting older. Um, we thought the green card case would be done. Now the husband is stuck outside for many, many more months. I have cases from Iran where the, uh, they go into what's called administrative processing. So this is when they do the interview at the embassy. And because America doesn't trust Iran, they're like, we have to do extended background checks for this case. All of a sudden, two, three years go by and the wife's here, husband's there. They're living apart. It's just a nasty situation. It's, 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 I feel it. I feel you. And it's like sad. And as a human toll, it is harsh. But we don't have any control over this kind of stuff. So that, that's, that's the situation with that. Uh, we had a couple of questions. I'll ask one more. Um, is a silent application service stopped now? A silent application happening. That's nothing you stopped. Uh, Hasley asked, I called the U.S. Embassy in Mexico, Sierra Juarez. They said they're not taking interview passing August. Um, I don't know what you mean by they're not taking interviews passing August. But in general, they're, they're just, and it depends on what kind of case it is. Um, uh, I don't know what to tell you, just whatever the embassy says. Because there's a difference. If you're doing a non-immigrant visa, they're opening those up faster than immigrant visas. But Mexico's uh, coronavirus is skyrocketing. And anyway, Ciudad Juarez, the U.S. Embassy in Mexico for green cards, had a huge backlog anyways. It would take six months a year for that to happen. So it's a crazy situation. Uh, with that, uh, we'll end it today. Uh, end of the week Friday, hard, hard days of work. 
I haven't slept, uh, not because of work, because of little kids, a two-year-old and a six-month-old, crying and this and that and waking up at night. I'm sure you have kids that know about that kind of stuff. And so uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of stress. Hopefully this weekend I can catch up on my sleep and hopefully you do the same and hopefully things just clear up with regards to the riots, the coronavirus, all this kind of messed up stuff that's, that's in our lives right now. We can go back to the normal stuff we worry about, not this kind of extreme kind of stuff. But thank you for everyone who joined. I appreciate it, uh, you coming and following. I'll be back here Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific and uh, we'll get into it again. If you're on Facebook, I think Facebook on Mondays I'll be back. And then after that on Instagram, on YouTube, so you catch me there. Thank you all for joining. I uh, hope you all stay safe. God bless and take care. God bless and take care of yourselves. Bye bye.